Must remember, the, tell us that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Drayton, I remember oh, her. She said, you will never be anything. You wow. Will never be wow. It clear as day. Maybe that's one of the drivers that's pushed me forward. No. In 2002, my dad approached me. Mm -hmm. um, he, he just wanted to retire then. He said he'd had mm. enough. And, and uh, so I actually bought the business off him. My ambition was um, to make it the place that it always could have been. Yeah. Somebody else would say, do you know, that's really good, but if you just twist a bit more, a little pull bit. a bit more, or do yeah. this. And the encouragement that I got, yeah. that pulls apart from school. It was the first time in my life, I'll mm. come on to something else as well. Yeah. First time in my life where I found that if the harder I tried, the better I got. Oh. So yeah, if you're weeks from shore or, or 2,000 miles from shore, you can't just say, oh, well, I can't fix it. It's funny. He said, because the harder I practice, the luckier yeah, I, I seem got. to get. <laughs> that's cheeky. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes, guys, welcome to another episode of Let Inspiration Take Over podcast. As always, I am excited about the conversation that I'm going to be having um, today purely because I feel so blessed to have uh, this next guest that I have uh, in my studio today. Um, I approached him at his work of business uh, because... I'd actually been there once before when I was doing my food business, Raw Express, where there was like a little mini uh, festival going on. So there were some businesses there and that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. So me and my wife came there and that sort of thing. So I was, I was looking for some businesses to speak to. I was like, you know, it's always best to start, uh, you know, closer to home as opposed to reaching out to people far away and that sort of thing. So, you know, I came to Gordon, um, you know, kindly asked him to come onto the platform and he's obliged me today. He sent me his story couple of days ago just to look through and to read through and i'm elated i am really excited to bring you uh, this story guys purely because there are some bits of it that really tie into me personally and the the things that he will more than likely reference i can relate to uh personally in my own life and yeah it's just another inspirational story that is going to be brought to your uh selves today golden welcome to let inspiration take over uh podcast feel at home please as always, let inspiration take over and give us your wonderful, uh, you know, success journey. Good Welcome. Morning, Isaac. How good are morning. You? I am good, thank you. How are you, God? Perfect. I must say, you are dapper down. <laughs> 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 I can see that you were taken over by inspiration when you came, yeah. right? Like putting us young lads to... Uh, <laughs> to shame. Absolutely. Uh, as you can see, guys, we're here drinking our coffees, fuel fueling up, um... Uh, and yeah, just just getting straight into it, you know, for perhaps the people that do not know you, if you could just give us a brief introduction of yourself and, and what you do currently. Yeah, I um, we have a, have a few businesses, a few um, bits and pieces going on, but um, my uh, my core business is the, um, the, the the marina at Saddletown Wharf mm -hmm. in uh, in the middle of Dewsbury. Brilliant. And, um, we've also got a, a pub there and I've got a couple of other pubs and bits and pieces going, some other marinas going on as well. Absolutely. And I've been to um, two of your marinas, uh, actually, the one here in Dewsbury is absolutely beautiful. Uh, when I came the other time um, to look for you, I went upstairs because the first time that I came, I hadn't gone upstairs and just the way it's set up, rustic, yeah. it's, it's got like this core uh, fire they're yeah. quite warm. I was like, do you know what? I definitely need to take my it's, family. It's um, it's there. funny. The um, the leg is in. Yeah, is uh, the way what he's talking about, and it's in the mm -hmm. it's in what used to be the hay loft. Brilliant. So the the building was uh, the old stable buildings for the horses that would have pulled the barges along the canal. Right. And, okay. And um, so the the hay loft upstairs got really old beams, and if you if you look at the beams, they're all misshapen and they're, they're crooked and that. And if you yeah. if you look actually at the um, the bits and pieces on them. There's like marks where the roof's been taken down before. So the building was built in 1800, 1700, whatever it was. Wow. It's a second-hand roof. No so way. how old would that have been? Yeah, exactly. I mean, has it been... Re so they were yeah. recycling in, in 1700, 1800. They were wow. way before our time. Absolutely. And I mean, that's one of the things I really love about Brit British culture, where they maintain those old yeah, kind of traditional yeah. buildings. It's interesting that you've said that. I had a reverend on uh, about couple of weeks ago and it was, he uh, is a reverend of Mill Hill Chapel in Leeds I don't know if you've heard of it beautiful chapel and he's saying it's been there for almost 300 years yeah. so what they did is they just kind of remastered the 
buildings that were there they've just kind of sort yeah, of yeah. kept it up as they've gone and I, I must say that's one of the things I really love about Wonderful. British um, tradition that sort of thing uh, with that said there's so much to jump into as I stated <laughs> guys you will see I'm just really looking forward to this conversation today just hearing uh from gordon but where i wanted to start from is perhaps if you can give us a little bit about your foundation uh right you know those um you know startup years upbringing um and that sort of thing what i always ask with that particular question is perhaps how not necessarily everything about your upbringing because we're going to be here all day uh, how it perhaps ties in you know to where you've come but some of the core things that you know uh, you went through or you learnt. Yeah, yeah, I um, <clears throat> left school at 16. Really? Struggled at school, didn't really enjoy school. Um, as it turns out, later mm. on in life, I found out that I've got dyslexia. Okay. Uh, lots of challenges growing up in the 1970s at school. If you picture the film Kez, mm. uh, I, don't, I don't know if you've seen it, but that was my no. upbringing. That was, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I went to Neosum School. That was uh, in Huddersfield. That's where I was brought up. And I oh, right. And, yeah. uh, like I say, I struggled at school. I didn't really have any... Um, Qualifications when I left, but okay. uh, in the 1980s when I left school, uh, left in 82, mm -hmm. uh, jobs were easy. There were loads okay. of jobs. It was, there were, you know, the Margaret Thatcher uh, was the prime minister at the time. The, the economy was booming and, um, yeah, like I say, you didn't, when you left school, you, you wasn't worrying about getting a job. And Huddersfield was massive in the, uh, in, at that time. It was a, the, um, when I say Huddersfield was massive, uh, the work in Huddersfield, if you were a boy, mm. um, you went into either engineering or the woolen industry. That, that That's what was accepted. That was okay. those, those were the big drivers Brilliant. Um, of, of the town at that time. And I went into engineering, did a, a, a four-year apprenticeship. Mm. Um, and when I left there, I'd uh, I'd been, been doing judo um, most of my young life. Brilliant. Just, Absolutely yeah. loved it. Um, wasn't particularly skillful at any ball games, but anything mm. that you could put your back into, loved absolutely. Loved. Yes. And so judo was the the thing that I um, yeah. I loved. I used to play rugby a little bit, but uh, I don't know why, but it was just absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved okay. it. And the, uh, the 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 guys in the club were were really helpful and supportive. And mm. I, I I did all right when I was younger. I did okay. I, I won the British Championships when I was nineteen. The under twenty one British Championships when I was nineteen. And brilliant. Um, yeah. Went on to uh, pick a few more tin pots up through my career. Mm. But the um, it, it, it was it was. I mean, it's a, I'm probably making light of it. But it was a massive part of my life when I was younger. The and sports, I, um, yeah? yeah, judo, yeah, yeah. And, and I think the um, one of the one of the things I remember mm -hmm. were when I was at school. Um, I don't want to speak bad of teachers, but if you were doing well, if you were doing really well, the teachers would focus on you. Yes. And if you struggled, you didn't really get a lot of attention. Yeah. You, got, you were just left to your own devices. I mean, I was possibly naughty, possibly wasn't the best student, so mm. maybe didn't get the best attention from the teachers. But the one thing I found at judo, mm. I went to the judo club. If I did something, the guys would say, that was really that was good. encouragement. Pull a bit more or twist a bit more or do this. There you go. And I thought, goodness me, this is, I like this attention. Yeah. This, this is somebody actually being nice to me, somebody Absolutely. encouraging me. So, yeah. and then I'd like, the, you say you did it again and somebody else would say, do you know, that's really good. But if you just twist a bit more, a little pull bit. a bit more or do yeah. this. And the encouragement that I got. Yeah. That pulls apart from school. Yes. Um, And it just pushed a button for me. Really pushed oh, wow. a button. And I just loved it. Just absolutely yeah. loved it. And I think the, um, the years that I was uh, uh, sort of like, training were just the best years of my life just absolutely go. loved it i went um when i finished my apprenticeship i got the opportunity then um judo is not a professional sport mm -hmm. i was an amateur then never, <coughs> never made a penny from judo but i um got the opportunity to train in kendall there was a judo center opened okay um and train full time uh, up in kendall um, was reserved for the 1984-1988 uh, Olympic Games. Games. Brilliant. Um, dislocated my shoulder in 1988, mm. um, just prior to the Olympic, well, the qualifications for the Olympics. So it was a, it was a, a bittersweet uh, year, it was 1988. I yeah. Won, won everything in the UK, absolutely everything. Yeah. Um, that year, I was absolutely on form. But I think the, um, the lessons that you learn... Mm -hmm. Is resilience. There you go. You know, you, 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 and it's a, it's a, 
it's a hard lesson to learn. Do you mm. know? When, when, when you feel like you've put everything into something. And sometimes about it's to take away it away. It. Yeah. That, that can be, I don't know, a referee's decision. Do you know? Yeah. Be, referees are human beings. They mm. have bad days, do you know? And, and um, or it can be injury or, or, yes. or whatever else, do you know? Yeah. And you're not going to win everything in life. You're Absolutely. Not, it's a lesson that I, yeah. I learned. I, I, it really it stood me well for the rest of my life. It's a yeah. hard lesson. It, it hurts while you're learning it. Absolutely. But, but it, you it, have um, to go through it. It gives you that resilience. Yeah. That, that, that thing whereby you are never beaten. You are. Yeah. And I, I found myself in, in business, in, in life. Yes. In some really <clears> difficult <throat> times, you know, you feel like there's no, there's no way out. You mm -hmm. know? There's no, but there is always a way out. Of there's course. Always, always, always a way out. And there's always an answer. Even though you don't know what the answer is, mm -hmm. you don't know what the answer is. You don't know the way out. And I found that just batting on, just keeping mm. going, not letting it be, uh, whatever mm. it is. Yeah. And the it for you may be different from the it for me. Absolutely. And um, just, just knowing that if you work hard enough, and you keep going long enough, you're going to you be will, able to you get You will there. come through the other side. And, Absolutely. Um, I mean, yeah, I was, I was going to say, Gordon, sorry not to interrupt you. I no, said, no, if, good, yeah. if, if there's one word that rings out about your story, it's resilience and it's sort of recalibrating, reshaping everything. So, um, you know, I wondered to say, you know, you said about school, your experience wasn't the best. Interesting enough, wasn't for me either. I wasn't very interested in school. At some point I thought maybe I'm not smart at this yeah. school thing. And as you say, sometimes teachers, if they believe that you're not good enough, I had another conversation with my last guest and we had the same conversation is that they just won't pay attention. If they just don't pay attention, you're actually lucky because sometimes they will actually tell you don't even try don't even bother yeah, right yeah. so the question that comes to mind now was you know in doing judo as you were saying you're getting that encouragement yeah, yeah. you're now discovering new things do you feel that that gave you back your confidence or rather do you, do you feel that that gave you an awareness of of your true potential beyond perhaps the experience that you you, you had in school I, I think that's i think you've hit the nail on the head i really mm. do it was it was the um, when I was at school, I got no encouragement, and, mm -hmm. and I'm not criticising the teachers. Not at it's all. Just, I, I hear you. That's, yeah. that's the fact of my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's that's how I felt at the time, and whether yeah. it's right or whether it's wrong, that's how I felt. Mm -hmm. And um, when I went to judo, like I said, these these I I, I got. It was, it was almost, it was like a revelation. There you go. It was a, it was like an absolute revelation. Yeah. I found, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not justification. I found, I found a place it's to like be. It's like purpose. Yeah. In a way. And, yeah. and uh, the, Belonging. It, was, it was a, it was, it was the first time in my life. I'll mm. come on to something else as well. Yeah. First time in my life where I found that if, the harder I tried, the better I got. Oh, that's The brilliant. better I got the better results and and oh, it was wow. a self-fulfilling prophecy I, I, yeah. I tried really hard i, I think the the catalyst was the encouragement yes so these i like i say i was just i was just a, just a, a young kid. gangly young yeah. kid you know but I'd, I'd not not really had it, it like i say it's the encouragement like i say you, you do something and somebody'd say that was really good but yeah. if you'd have just done this a little bit more yeah and i, I remember thinking Goodness yeah. me! Instead of saying that's rubbish, just why are you, you know, doing that? The, the class, just yeah. do you know? Yeah. And it was like that—that that little catalyst. Yes. So you tried it, and yeah. you you thought actually this works. Yeah. So you got a little bit better, then you tried yeah. a bit harder, and that's that's what I was going to come on to. Um, yeah. This is just like the little things that pop into my mind. Oh, listen, inspiration's it, taking be, over. Go on. That's, from, that's how it works. It'll be going from one point to another. It's all good. That's the one thing I found when I had children. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. It's the one thing that. I found that the more I loved them, mm -hmm. the harder. It, then that, I, I don't know whether it's judo or whether it's just a connection. Just I put in my own little brain to, mm -hmm. to, to 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 make it work. But the more I loved them, the more I got back. Oh, and the wow. more I got back, it was fantastic. It was like the best job in the world being brilliant. Dad. Yeah, I loved every moment of being dad. Oh wow! And yeah. The, the, like I said, people say, oh, my children, this and my children. I know why they're like this. Yeah. yeah. I, my, I've loved every, from 
I struggled when they were babies. Oh, wow. I must admit, the babies are. The, I'm struggling about me. I've got a one month old. Yeah, well, <laughs> but one go on, yeah. <laughs> so I just remember yeah. when they started crawling and smiling and yeah. climbing on furniture. You've, you haven't got long to wait till they're like. Oh, uh, trust me. And uh, it's, <laughs> nobody prepares you for how hard it is. And no. when the babies, you can read all the books in the world, but trust yeah. me, isn't it hard having a baby? It is difficult. <laughs> And I mean, and, and I'm probably yeah. uh, probably not best place to say that, but yeah. um, I, but then from toddlers, from not toddlers, but from you know, like when they start climbing off, mm -hmm. goodness me, I've loved every moment. That's brilliant. Absolutely every every moment from mm -hmm. them being toddlers to, to 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 you know, like young children to teenagers to to adolescents to 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 adults. Wow. I've loved every moment of being dad. I've Absolutely. Loved it. I've made some mistakes. I've yeah, but we'll it's do. never ever ever been that I've not tried. Wow. Do you know what I mean? And I've yeah. loved absolutely every moment. Yeah. Of it. And I mean just to not, not to stop you in your tracks. Yeah, no, it's good. Where do you feel that that passion came from? Do you know the 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 um, you are natural father. You speak, and I can see the passion in your face. <laughs> you don't have to tell me the words. I can just see it in you, and it's similar to myself. Like before I I became a dad, I wanted to become a dad. So when I found out we were having my daughter, it you just naturally there was no panic. There was no thing about oh you know, and it's not saying that it's easy. Once again, who am I to say? My wife might have a, a different view, but it's something that I embodied because my own father. He was a brilliant dad. He was available, he was always there. He would get us the little things that we wanted, simple things like bikes and he would bring them. And at the time I didn't understand it, that he was appealing to, to something in me, right? In a way he was speaking to the man that was eventually going to become a father because I saw him be a good dad. Yeah, he yeah. was a disciplinarian and that sort of thing. Taking it back to judo, even I'm similar to yourself, right? It goes all over the place. I found that I got mentorship, right, from uh, my coach at the time, God rest his soul, he, um, he passed away. Um, I think he might have been a Commonwealth champion uh, as well, Griff Griffiths Ngongolo. You might have heard of him. Yeah, yeah. Zambian judoka, one of, the, one of the best. And what I found in the thing that you were telling me, when they were telling me, oh, goshi, you know, yes. um, and this and they teach you, no, do it better. No, next time do it this way. What he was doing is he's teaching me, he's mentoring me. I was learning discipline. I was learning uh, time management, organization, and all these things. I was learning competition. And I didn't realize at the time that I was actually learning something. It's only now as an adult, I'm like, do you know what? I was actually going through an experience you and a just, process you've just right? reminded me there yeah i, I hated <laughs> running i hated oh. running with a passion yeah however i knew yeah it's the, the discipline that you just mentioned there yeah i knew to be the best euro player i needed to be wanted to be had yeah. to be i had to run there yeah. was no there, it wasn't a you know I had to run yeah so the Every morning, uh, in, in I lived at a place called um, called Berry Brow, or, or it's close to a, a bigger place called Newsham. Yeah, I used to run up to Castle Hill mm -hmm. just about every day, or when I was doing judo, we'd run before judo. Brilliant. And it's that knowing that you know, like it's not easy, it's mm. not nice, the pain's awful. However, you've got to do it if 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 that's your ambition, if this is where you want to go, then you, you have to do it. You've got to do it. There's no and 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 that that. that that um, discipline, you know, there are mm. going to be hard times, there are going to be things you don't want to do. Absolutely. Go. My dad said yeah. to me, um, whatever job you do, mm -hmm. whatever job you do, there are going to be, even if you're eating ice cream for a living, you know, or tasting chocolate, <laughs> whatever. whatever <laughs> job, wouldn't I love that? Yeah. Go, there is going to be Something. parts of the job that you don't like. Boy. Suck it up, get on with it. And, and just, you know... That's my life, God. You're speaking to me, but go on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 well, the, yeah. Other, the other thing, I, I the little the little little bits of gold I have uh, yeah. learned over the years, I remember, because I'm in the canal boat industry, that's yeah. that's, that, that's the... Um, that, that's the When I say my primary my primary job, that's, mm -hmm. you know... That's what you do. That's yeah. where, that's where I've, I've done most of my life. But um, I remember, and I can't remember who it was, but somebody said to me... Um, mm. If you're on a ship, and this is obviously canal boats are a totally different um, thing, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But it, the guy's philosophy is what I'm talking about, and this guy yeah. come from from being at sea. He said, "If you're two thousand miles from shore, mm -hmm. you cannot be stuck. You cannot be nope. got to find an Keep answer. moving. It's Absolutely, all right. it's all right saying, oh well, I don't know. If you're, if 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 I don't know, for example, if you're a water maker, mm -hmm. do you know like oh, you, 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 the thing that's Turn seawater into fresh water. Yeah. If it stops working, you can't. If you're 
weeks from shore or, or 2,000 miles from shore, you can't just say, oh, well, I can't fix it. You know, I, you I, are I, gonna I have to find a way. You know, it's yeah. not working. It's somebody else will sort it. No. You can't do that. You've got yeah. to, first of all, take responsibility for it. Yes. Which is a fantastic lesson to learn. Yes. And you've got to find an answer. Absolutely. You've got to find, and that's what yeah. I, 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 I am. Always, always, always looking for an answer. Absolutely. Make, make mistakes. Hand over fist. Always making mistakes. But, but I am never stuck. I'm yeah. always looking for an answer. Yeah. And I always try my hardest. Absolutely. Do you know what I say, Gordon, even before you continue? Oh, you're preaching right now. Like inspiration's taking over. Mm. I say there's always another way. And I had to learn that the hard way because I used to be a complainer. Oh God, this is not working. Oh, what am I going to do? Even the studio before I put it together, I was like, I wanted all this stuff, but I wasn't in a position where I could go get it all at once. I'm looking at this. I can't get the funds. I'm looking at that. It's not working. And then I decided like, okay, I want to buy one thing at a time. And I've told this story so many times. So I've literally bought each piece of equipment, one thing at a time. It's taken me about eight months to get to this point. But it's from that statement that you said, where I realized there's more than one way. There's always, do you know that saying, there's more than one way to skin a cat? Absolutely. I am the living epitome of what you've just said. And I love it so much because everything else that I'm going to embark on, that's, I take that sentiment with me to say, if one way hasn't worked, how can you try it differently? How can you try it another way? It might take longer. It might cost you. The thing about responsibility, you have to accept because I was like, okay, I want to put out a premium product. I don't want to cheap out. I don't want to cut corners. And there wasn't anywhere I could do that chipping out, right? So I was like, okay, I'm going to have to get the equipment. There's no way that I can go around the corner. And it's like, okay, wh however long it takes me, it takes me working six days a week overtime. That's what I was doing like a mad person. But I was like, that's the way I got here. So it's just like reinforcing and re-encouraging your point to say, there is always a way. It's just, are you willing to pay the cost or are you willing to pay the price? That's the question that most people ask and sometimes they'll tell themselves no, or they say it can't be done. What they're saying is they're not willing to, you know, to sort of pay the cost, but yeah, Absolutely. go ahead. Absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, yeah. So, yeah. There's always an answer. Yeah. There's always an answer. Absolutely. And um, I have a, the, I have the, the legazine in Dewsbury, that's, that's mm -hmm. a, a business of my own. However, I, uh, a few years ago, I, um, I, uh, I, I brought a, uh, an industry um, uh, advisor in. Yes. A uh, professional, um, who, uh, a guy called Craig Isaacs. Okay. Craig's got, Experience. loads and loads and loads of pubs okay. he's been in the pub industry all his life and we were like i said i needed a bit of advice some some help brilliant and craig came along and we were looking at a few bits and pieces and we got on really well got on really well mm. so we decided to um to work together as a partnership okay so we, we formed a separate company and we bought the uh we bought the kirk eaton uh the well it was called the yet and cask in kirk eaton mm. um we renovated that and it it, it it did really really well um but Craig has a, the, the, where I was going with this was mm -hmm. Craig has an expression and, and we've got very similar um, mindsets on things. There you go. And uh, I, I, I love his expression. He says, uh, when it gets a bit tough, mm -hmm. when things get hard, mm -hmm. just pedal a bit harder. There you go. You know, oh, I, that's, that's a quotable that. right what, there. Yeah, what, a, what, a, what a great, I, I use that on yes. myself. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, when it, when, it gets yeah. A bit, when it gets a bit tough and it gets a bit sticky, just, just pedal a bit harder. Work a bit longer, get yeah. up a bit earlier. Yeah. Both, I mean, we're both up at, at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we, we're both, like I say, at it from yeah. six until whatever time. Yeah. And I, there is a, there's a real sense of having done something when you get to the end of the day mm -hmm. and you've, so you've put a full day in and you, you, you maybe, maybe you've not done anything other than answer a lot of emails and, mm -hmm. you know, do, do your Monday and stuff. But there's an, there's a sense of achievement when, at the end of the day, when you've put a full shift in, when you can look back and that's when, that's when another mm -hmm. thing, I remember, uh, things are popping into my mind. Now. Oh, uh, I remember, <laughs> um, Dave, uh, Dave Nuttall, a, a, a really good friend of mine, okay. his dad, Dave used to help me with, the, when I was younger, uh, doing judo. Dave was one of the ones who encouraged me. Brilliant, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> he'd always go for a, go for a drink after, after we'd trained and that. Yeah. And uh, Dave used to take me everywhere and um, he was a brilliant, brilliant uh, role model. Mm. And he, he, he said something, uh, tying back to what I was saying there, he said, I've never, ever, ever felt 
guilty once about putting my hand out at the end of the week for a day's wa- uh, for a week's wages. Oh wow! He said, "You know," he said, "I've got no. a shift in every week." There you and, go. And um, he said, "I've never once." And he was talking about people that sometimes, you know, the shirk and mm-hmm. read the newspaper and just like you know. Get, get take I don't know three quarters of an hour for the for the morning break and mm. sit in the toilet out of sight and and he said I've never once and I thought oh, I like that I like there that. you go and I remember the the uh, <laughs> just <laughs> on a roll I remember so years good. ago yeah I first started in engineering and they put you, they always put you a young yeah. lad um, we, we did like a a twelve month um, training mm-hmm. oh, it's called off the job so we were in a like a a college uh, they used to call it technical college tech so we did a 12 month um uh first year off the job mm-hmm. and then when we went back uh, when i went into the actual factory uh they put you with an experienced engineer somebody who's yep. going to teach you the ropes and that i remember frank never forget him he um he the, the philosophy of people in the 70s and i really remember this I remember the, the older people used to say, I've I've been working most of my working life, or what mm-hmm. you know, whatever they say. Yeah. I've never had a day off sick. Oh wow. Do you know, I've never claimed benefits once. I've oh, never wow. taken and they were the, there was a pride yes. in never taking a penny from the state. It was yes. a it was a possibly misplaced, <clears throat> but there was it, it was a. I, I remember that was the working class way. They were like, wow. it was like, you know, I, I've, I've, worked, I've never had a day off sick. I've never, yeah. you know, I've never, I've never, I've never been on the dole. Yeah. And and it was a, I've worked basically. I've paid my way. Yeah. I'm carrying on paying my way. Mm-hmm. I don't sponge off anybody. Mm-hmm. And I and I work hard. Yeah. And those were the those were the. That was the philosophy at, yeah. at the time. And I think that was, a you know, like after the war sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 they had pride that never had a day off sick. You know, Absolutely. That, and and, and, and so you. you know, there, there, <laughs> there are things where now, yeah. obviously, if you're not so good and you go into the office and you're spreading it around, the the culture and, 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 and thinking is different now. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, you, you do have a... A responsibility to your colleagues absolutely but i remember that, that it was the mindset that i'm possibly talking about rather than the actual practicalities no of it. i hear you i absolutely hear you gordon and it's interesting that you were saying that uh one of my aunts uh auntie Mwasoko, i've spoken about her before she came to see the studio and she was like really impressed with everything that i'd, I'd done and she was saying i was saying to her like man i've been working like a dog over the last eight months and sometimes i'm like you know in the coming months hopefully when things settle in i can have even a little bit more more time for my people like sometimes it's doing like six six day weeks and that yeah, kind of thing yeah. and uh she said to me you know hard work never hurt anyone and she said Absolutely, it with a smile yeah, yeah, yeah. this lady is hard working and her husband they don't you, play uh, god I'm, I'm sure you're, so you're talking about your, your grandma your auntie no my aunt your uh, auntie, auntie yeah, Masuku, yeah. yeah. So I, I remember again just this yeah. is like people when i was younger when i was obviously as, a, as an athlete you've, yes. got, you've got an appetite like you know, you can, you can, you can never be free. Eat. You can eat absolutely, and eat. yeah. And uh, I remember the philosophy of old, older women. You know, like yeah. uh, girlfriends, mums, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. I remember the, um, the people. It must be a post-war sort of thing as well. You uh-huh. know? I remember them. They always used to say, "Oh, I love a young man with a good appetite." Really? <laughs> <laughs> I love a, man well. with a young man who can eat his food. <laughs> there you They're go. Like every, every like your mum's, my mum's generation, yeah. all that sort of thing. Yeah. They all love the young lad who could eat. <laughs> eat, yeah, but uh, I mean, biblically, as what it says, like if you, if you don't work, you don't eat, right? Absolutely, so I, I was yeah. gonna say, like for me, over the last couple of months, I've literally just fallen back in love uh, with work. Even though, as you said, it doesn't mean it's easy. Sometimes I'm tired and I feel it, and you, you do need rest. The thing yeah, that you're saying, be course, responsible yeah, with it yeah. and everything else. But I will tell you, for anything that you need to achieve, I can't see any way that you can do it without work regardless of what you want to do right even the simplest things like i work after work so i've got a day job where i go i'm grafting right now doing like a um, delivery job it's good because the money is pretty good but then also um it just allows me a certain level of flexibility to be able to do this pedaling a bit harder pedaling a bit harder so from if it wasn't for my job currently i wouldn't be able to to do this you know what i love and that sort of thing so i'm like i'm there working but it's like i'm falling in love with it again but then there are times where i'm tired and i have to come back home and still be a dad I can't say, well, oh, because I'm tired, I can't be a dad. My daughter off. won't allow me not to do it. My son, as I say, we've got a one mum forward and sometimes yeah. he's crying. He's been crying all day. That means the mum can't always be holding no, him. No, I have to, to take over yeah, without yeah. a complaint. The other day I just came, grabbed my son and I say, but as you said, but in all of that, 
I've got such a sense of satisfaction about what I'm doing because at the end of it, I'm seeing what's going on. I'm seeing it grow. And I, I get to speak to amazing people such as yourself, right? Reaching out in that. It was just from a conversation. Just jumping back yeah. to what you were saying. On, yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, the, uh, the judo evolved yeah. from different martial arts and a, a, a yeah. guy called Jigoro Keno uh, took a, a load of things from um, different different martial arts, put them together. To put it, he, yeah. he created judo. Yeah. And uh, he... he the, well, jump, jumping back to what you said, mm -hmm. he he said, "Where there is effort, yeah. there is achievement," Absolutely. and that's exactly what you. If you try yeah. hard, you will achieve. Absolutely, and that's that, that's the philosophy of judo. Yeah. That's the that's the core um, philosophy. Yeah, a, yeah, uh, effort, essence, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was going to say, like, what happens as well? Certain things start to fall into line, and they start to even opportunities. Right, opportunities meet you at a place where you're you're ready. So even with what I'm doing, I feel like something is brewing and continue growing, continue working hard, there will be something that will meet me at a place there where... A, there was a, yeah. <laughs> sorry, this thing Go on, go on. Yes. So was a, I, I, I'm probably going to get this story totally wrong and somebody okay. watching will, 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 Let, will, hold will, will tell, but tell you on. exactly what the story is. But on, yeah. in my mind, though, the way I heard it, there was a golfer uh -huh. in the 70s uh, or, or 80s, Ballesteros. Mm -hmm. the, again, the golfer may be the wrong one. Okay. But uh, he, he, he won some tournament. And um, the interviewer uh, interviewed him and he said something along the lines of, oh, you did well there, you won. Mm -hmm. He said, but you've got to accept that you had a, um, a, a lot of luck okay. in, in winning this. And and right. the, the guy said, uh, he said, absolutely, yeah, definitely. He said, I had a, a mm -hmm. lot of luck. He said, but it's funny. He said, because the harder I practice, the luckier yeah, I, I seem to get. <laughs> <laughs> that's cheeky. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Is you get my point? Yeah. The harder I try, the luckier yeah. I get. Absolutely. Oh, that's a that's a that's a lesson, isn't it? That's a yeah. lesson for life. Yeah, absolutely. No, that that is the perfect way. And I love um, that, Lisa. Like, it. there's another. I know it's nothing to do with whatever. But yeah, go there was on. A, I remember this. Steve Redgrave was he was the rower. He won five Olympic gold medals. Yeah. And um, he was rowing in the five thousand meters, uh, and they were like, I love sport. I love mm. the Olympic games. And I was watching the adrenaline was flowing, and I, mm. and the Brit did well and we'd won and we'd they were celebrating and that mm -hmm. and then he comes off and and the, the guy's saying oh, i said the i forget the germans for example yeah he said oh they were coming up from behind he said yeah. and you were gonna he said then you just won by this much. much he said if it would have been five thousand and five meters is... you would have lost uh -huh. and steve redgrave said uh he said, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. He said, it's 5,000 metres. Yeah. And he said, and we were in front and we won. There he you said, go. And if it would have been 5,005 metres, we would have won. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like, I um, love that. I you love know, it. Th there's a saying, the rule of marginal gains. I don't know if you've, you've yeah, heard of, of it. There's actually yeah, yeah. A so it says, like exactly shaving the legs in that. Right. Yeah, so the yeah, thing yeah. that you said, if you pedal a little bit harder, that statement that you said, yeah, you yeah. actually get better and it gets easier. The thing again that you said about it gets, it starts to get easier. That's it, exactly it. So the person saying, oh, it's just a little bit. That little bit came from that little bit more those, trying. All those little bits. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And that desire, that desire. Yeah. And, and jumps back to where we were saying before. That, mm. And I'm sure my, my sport was judo. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm absolutely confident whether your sport is 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 is, is chess, snooker, football, basketball, whatever. Yeah. You know, like cricket, what, table tennis, badminton, whatever your yeah. sport is. I genuinely believe it teaches you resilience. It absolutely. teaches you that you're not going to win every time. Yeah, that you're going to get some bad decisions against you. Yeah. Things are going to happen against your control, and it's a matter of how you deal with that. Absolutely, and it, that's what shows whether you've got character or whether you're going to give up and, and, and never do anything with your life. Absolutely, and I think you know those lessons. Are the mm. I, I don't think losing is a bad lesson. I think learning mm. to lose is a good lesson. It's definitely it's a good a good lesson, good lesson yeah. You know, and it's a good one to learn early as well because um, that's another thing about today's society. I speak as if I'm not part of today's society, no, no, no. but today's society, uh, you know, you get certain people that just don't know these principles that we're talking about like there's no principle of winning or losing or working hard and that sort of thing so there's some aspects of it where like i don't know i'm just not there with it because perhaps it's from upbringing that i learned about competition as i said through judo as well myself i learned through 
Present. There were times, the first time I ever lost, I cried because it's like I was a kid and I didn't understand. But next time, as you said, I worked harder. I won, I won some trophies. I won some silver medal, gold medals, silver medals and that kind of thing. And I didn't even realize in that moment that I was, um, <clears throat> I was learning something. But I wanted to bring it back, Gordon, uh, to sort of jump in more so into the work. But before we do... I love your story in in how you ended up where you are now. And if somebody was looking at it, if they see what you're doing, you wouldn't have thought that Gordon would be here, right? Like <laughs> from his story, just the way it goes. And that's what I love about this platform is that most people that you I get we get on here, they'll be doing something, but their journey is one that you could never like you can't guess it because it's just it's just inspiring. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So the first question I wanted to ask you before we jump into how you sort of got into the, uh, you know, yeah. the business and that sort of thing was, what was your mindset, you know, when you had that injury? You told us about the, the shoulder yeah, injury yeah. that you'd had at the time. Obviously, you're now coming from a sport that you're completely passionate about. As you said, you loved it. It was your everything. So I would really like for you to take us back to your, your mind process. First of all, when it very first happened and did you accept it immediately uh, or was it a situation where it took you a little yeah, bit longer? That's a good question. Um, yeah. yeah. So, the, yeah, I, um, <clears throat> so I, I, I had a fantastic year in 88. Mm -hmm. Just won everything. It's the end of 87. In mm -hmm. 88, won everything. And um, I uh, went to the European Championships uh, yeah. in um, Pamplona in Brilliant. 1988 uh, in, in Spain. And, um, I uh, dislocated my shoulder in 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 the, in the, I think the quarterfinals or something like that. Yeah, had one uh, one fight to get into the final, and um, the um, the the injury put me out. It just put right. me out, and and uh, it, it carried on coming out, and uh, I didn't. It, it came, I think, about eight times in total. Every time oh, I wow. judo mat, and it just just ruined everything. Anyway, in mm. those days, you couldn't. I, mum and dad had. They, they were they weren't wealthy people. And mm -hmm. The only way I could have had to um, continue my judo career was to get surgery. And mm. I remember going to the uh, the uh, the A and E uh, right. accident emergency in the hospital, and the guy the the, the, the surgeon telling me that he he, he wouldn't do a, an operation on me mm. because it wasn't bad enough. Um, mm. Not being able to compete and train wasn't. Um, in their opinion, uh, a good enough reason for the NHS to, to operate. Um, this yeah. is 1988. It's a yeah. different thing. And um, it was a, that, that was challenging. But okay. I remember again, one of somebody I know, yeah. one of the coaches over in Manchester, we used to travel around. Brilliant. He said he told me about a, a, um, a wrestler in the Olympic final in mm. Montreal in 1976, um, who, who's, got his um this is how focused i was yeah it, it um his shoulder came out and um he then sort of like did something and put it put his own shoulder back in oh wow so i thought yeah. this is absolutely true this is absolutely true i thought right well if, if that's the situation i'm gonna get my shoulder so bad i'm gonna ruin it so badly oh, that i can wow. just put it back in myself Ooh. so um it it's will risky. be so I carry, <laughs> I just carried on doing yeah. it and it carried on coming out and i just thought well i'll just get it because they, they used to uh. they, they, it, <clears throat> i got some some advice i don't know whether it was good advice or bad advice but mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, a physiotherapist at the time said you've got to build your shoulder muscles up to protect it um which i did build okay. build my shoulders up get loads and loads of but what what that did is when you if, when you do dislocate uh something you, your body goes into spasm it goes like that Ooh. it's you you cannot control this okay. no, no control of it but the stronger your muscles are the, the better the, yeah the, well the the bigger the spasm is yeah and so the the, the the doctors can't actually put your shoulder back in because your muscles mm. are going into spasm mm -hmm. you need to relax for the bones to go back into place mm. so anyway that's that so um, I just thought I'll, 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 I'll just knack it up so badly that I can, you know, carry on doing judo. Anyway, uh, long story short, I managed to get surgery uh, mm -hmm. 12 months. I got surgery at the back end of eight, it's, uh, April 89. Mm. And then I had another six or 12 months off uh, with the recovery and that. But I never got back to form. Oh, wow. Yeah. Never got back to form. I came back and, and um, probably, I think I got like a third place in the British Championships or something like oh, that. Oh, wow. Um, after the injury? Yeah. Well, after, you know, two, two years off or, yeah. or, or whatever, three years off. Mm -hmm. After after the injury. But it was, you know, like when you, in 88, I was just sailing on top of the world. I felt 
brilliant. Oh, Everything wow. was in place. I felt, yeah. you know, like I do feel like I was good enough to win the world championships. Oh, once. Wow. I wasn't like a, you know, like one of them players that could, you know, win it five times in a row or whatever. But at but least I do once, feel yeah. like I was, and, and somebody would argue, somebody would say, yeah, you weren't that good. You were never, you know, somebody may well have their own opinion. Mm -hmm. but that's how I felt at the time. Yeah. You know, that's genuinely, honestly, how I felt at the time. And I did feel like I could, like I said, I, I, I didn't, practice with anybody that I felt I had any problems with. I, 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 was, I was winning everything. I felt fantastic. Yeah. But then from there, um, jumping back to your question, mm -hmm. dealing with it was a, a long-term thing. It wasn't something that I just felt in bad. the moment. So yeah. I, and I was lucky that, you know, I knew then that I, I, I don't know. It's a, it was a, it took me a good while to realize I wasn't going to win the Olympic Games because mm. I think every young person that's a, that's a goal, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, but I carried on training a little while and carried on doing judo and, mm -hmm. and then slowly uh, moved into, uh, 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 I went back to uh, engineering. Mm -hmm. Worked for my dad, actually. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, tell us um, a bit about that. <laughs> yeah, so he had, um, he had the, uh, the, the war for, uh, uh, at Savile Town. Mm -hmm. But he, my dad was a, a lifestyle operator, shall we say? Right. He wasn't a businessman. He he, okay. um, he worked in his overalls, in his boiler suit, and he 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 just bodged around, made a few quid here, made a few quid there. Mm -hmm. but he was a hard working man, and that, that that's the I always had that in my mind. He he uh, he was a great role model that way. Right. And um, so I worked for him for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he, he always talking about retiring, but he was never going to retire if, if Trump had been on. <laughs> yeah. Always leading me down that road. Yeah. So I ended up uh, setting up on my own in 1996. I had a young family. Uh, yeah. And a bit like you were saying, uh, just a man in a van. Just there you go. An engineer driving around, yeah. canal boat engines, fixing this, fixing that. Yeah. Um, I had a fair bit of work at Dewsbury, just purely through, sort of like my dad, and he had the canal boats and that. Yeah. And business kind, I got a really good contract with a company in Wales. Brilliant. I used to get up at five o'clock in the morning, well, probably about half past four, drive to Wales, get there for seven o'clock in the morning when the factory opened. I'd fit two canal boat engines in the day and then oh, wow. back. I'd be, yeah. This isn't good. This really isn't good, but it's the, it, so I'd, I'd be driving points. home at seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, just yeah. falling asleep at the wheel, coming Ooh. home with the M62 to Manchester. Yeah. You're just being so absolutely exhausted. Knackered. I remember that clearly. Yeah. Just trying to, I remember trying to pinch my legs, trying to nip my legs, just trying to keep myself away. <sighs> that can be hard. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> just, just trying to yeah. open the window, you know, middle of winter. Mm -hmm. and just trying to, just, I remember fighting the sleep, trying to get yeah. home. And then it, it wasn't every single day. It'd be like mm. two or three times a week. And then I'd be just I'd be doing my own little jobs. But it was good. And it helped me to buy Apple Bridge Marina in the middle of, uh, in between uh, Leeds and Bradford. Oh, wow. It was my first business. Brilliant. Uh, my first, well, working on my own was my first business. So do you know, like, uh, before you continue, when you were in that job, what you were saying? So yeah, were yeah. you, like, saving up with, with yeah, a plan and a yeah, mission yeah. to... But I, didn't have yeah. a, I didn't have a specific <clears throat> path that I was on. Do you know, mm. I didn't say, right, this is my goal. And I do. I just yeah. thought, right, I, 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 we need to put bread on the table. That's, yeah. that's first. Yeah. Uh, and and um, you, when, you, when your family's young, you... you, you you just you do just, what you need to do. Yeah, it's like yeah. that. Just like the horse, they put the blinkers on, so you can't yeah. see anything else. Yeah, yeah. You're just focused on that. And I, I, I bought yeah. Apple Bridge Marina. Um, I bought the lease on Apple Bridge Marina. Yeah. In between at the end of 1999, early 2000. Yeah, I think signed the lease in about October 1999. Was that your dad's company? No, that was the, oh, me on oh, my right. own. Okay. Up on my own. Totally oh, brilliant. Different, totally okay. different. Yeah. And then uh, <clears> in 2002, my dad approached me. Mm -hmm. um, he. He just wanted to retire then. He said he'd had mm. enough. And, and uh, so I actually bought the business off him. Wow. So, because I have a brother and I didn't want any complications of yeah. this, that and the other. So I bought his business. That is um, brilliant. Yeah. And then um, in 2008, um, so the, the Legas Inn yeah. uh, was... Um, it was developed in 1996, possibly when I was just uh, setting up. Mm. So they they rented uh, the premises from my dad, 
Um, so then I inherited that business right. as a as a as a, a tenant right. when I uh, took uh, took my dad's business, bought my dad's business. Yeah. So I inherited them as a tenant, and then in two thousand, I bought that in two thousand two thousand and two. Mm -hmm. So in two thousand and eight, they were struggling financially, mm. uh, couldn't pay the rent, and and came along, and uh, so I ended up buying the business mm -hmm. from the liquidator. Got it for a really good price. Uh, Brilliant. Um, so I bought the they went into liquidation. I bought the business from the liquidator. Yeah. And this is like probably later on. Um, in the in the uh, about nine, uh, 2016 17, mm. the um, this is when I met Craig Isaacs, mm. uh, kind of who's now your partner, in, in brilliant the pub, in the pub, yeah. in the pub side of things, yeah. and um, yeah, I had the legacy, legacy in, but when I when I took Dewsbury Boatyard over, mm -hmm. Saveltown Wharf over. Um, it was just a scrapyard. It was like a scrapyard. The really? Place. It was a, the, it was just a mess. A big, the beautiful place. Yeah, got, yeah, yeah. No and, way. And yeah. But yeah. When, when you said before about this, this, this studio that we're yeah. in now, yeah. how you, 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 there was no, there's only one way to do it. Yeah. And I was the same. I just didn't have the funds to create what I wanted to create. It never so makes every sense. Year yeah. I spent some money. Every <laughs> oh, year brilliant. I spent some money and I spent some money and I spent some money. Wow. And each year it got better. I had a, I had a, a goal of where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm no scared, no, no stranger to a day's work. Mm -hmm. And each, each year we've done a bit more and a bit more and a bit more. And until we are where we are. Brilliant. And, um, it's been an evolution. Yeah. And I, I if I couldn't, I couldn't have done, it. I think I couldn't have stepped into my shoes now. Mm. You know, it, it could have only happened the way, the way it's happened. happened. Absolutely. It, 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 you know what I mean? I, there's no way in the world I could have earned, saved up enough money to get to where I am now. Mm. Then. Do you know what mm. I mean? So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, you know what I mean? I, I'm not explaining myself very well, but the young uh, me couldn't have job. just yeah. had enough money just to buy the business as it yeah. is now. So absolutely it had to evolve it had to come from there and, yeah. and move along the lines yeah and um it, it the the thing that's driven me mm. is i remember taking it over and i well i remember working for my dad and the number of people that used to say this could be this mm. could be this could be lovely this with this i it, it this might, could be a lovely place this could yeah. be a really nice place and so my my ambition was um to make it the place that it always could have been. Wow. So it, there you it, go. It, it, it's been, <laughs> and it's yeah. been a family business since I think my dad bought the, the business in 1982. So oh, it's been in wow. the family since so you've 1982. You've kept it. Yeah. So it's, it's poignant actually that, that he had it in 1982 and I mm -hmm. bought it off him in 2002. 2002. So, wow. Uh, and it's, it was written before now. you even knew it. <laughs> 20 years later again, isn't it? Yeah. And so. I was going to say to yourself, Gordon, see the thing that I spoke about where if you do what you're supposed to do at certain periods, opportunity meets you at a point when you're ready. Yes. Imagine if you hadn't gone through the journey that you went through and that opportunity obviously came about for you to buy your, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. your dad's business. You wouldn't have been able to do it. But I bet you when you were doing that, as you said, when you were doing, when you started out in 1996, you probably didn't have the mind of thinking that later on you're going Absolutely. to be... Well, you, you, there's no way you can think that. Do you get my point? Yeah. But then the opportunity met you at the Absolutely. right place, but you yeah, did yeah. you did the majority of it. And I genuinely believe in, in, in that concept to say that if you're on the right path, you put in the work, there is some stuff that will be coming where it will meet I you. I think I totally agree you with know? you. And, and I remember mm. that like my, my focus at, when I was younger was uh, yeah. canal boats and it, business was good. Oh, it mm. was so good. We were selling canal boats for fun. Wow. We, you know, in the mid 2000s, yeah. we, were, we were doing business was really good. Mm -hmm. But in 2008, the crash happened. Uh, mm. and it was oh, like I remember. Someone unplugged the telephone. Yes. It, the, we, we were taking crash. orders. We were wow. doing this. Uh, so it was almost like somebody unplugged the phone. Mm. But I think the the thing that instead of just giving in and, and just thinking, oh, goodness me, woe is me, the, I'd just turned the pub over. Mm. And I was looking at other avenues, other ways of moving forwards. There just you go. Different, just different ways of doing things. Yeah. And although I, we, I had loads and loads of staff and this, that and the other, mm -hmm. it we had to we had to regroup, had to cut right back, and then mm -hmm. look at ways of developing and growing from there. Yeah, absolutely. How? What are some of the ways you reinvented yourself briefly? Uh, post, funny, yeah, I, it's funny that 
I wouldn't call it invented myself. It's looked mm. at other opportunities Choices. and avenues. Yeah. So I think the principles are the same. You know, the principles of, of business are the principles of business. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and the principles of peddling a bit harder Absolutely. when it gets tough. Mm. You, I think you've just got to look for avenues. And, and, and I think there are opportunities out there. And it's a matter mm -hmm. of just identifying those opportunities. Yeah, I and, agree. And again, it goes back to the, 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 the old golfing story. Mm -hmm. You know, the harder you try the more these opportunities seem to come along. Come, yeah. Uh, the and, luckier and, you get, uh, as exactly, you say. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It isn't, it isn't, it, it is luck. You make your mm. own luck. And, and uh, yeah. but I think, you know, like I say, the yeah. more you're looking for opportunities, yeah. the more you will find opportunities. Absolutely. If you just focus on, woe is me, do you know, yeah. I'm getting no, no canal boat orders. Yeah. You know, we, we, I had to start thinking, right, well, the pub's making a few quid. How can yeah. we make that, make a few more? More. How, and how can how I can look we do at more? like other opportunities and avenues yeah. that I can travel? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> absolutely brilliant, Gordon. Um, I was going to ask you, obviously, we'll, we'll be rounding up uh, very soon. I understand you're a busy man. I'm so, so thankful for you being here. Yeah, um, I, I was going to ask you, uh, you know, obviously we've had the pandemic, uh, yeah. you know, come. It's affected so many people. People have had to reshift their purposes and yeah, visions yeah, and yeah. things. It, it, briefly, perhaps, how has that, you know, impacted your business and what are some of the things or some of the lessons that you've got in, uh, you again, know, from it? Yeah. You don't, again, it's the, it's the <laughs> never be stuck. It's that, you know, you can't mm -hmm. be 2000 miles from shore and yeah. have a, you know, and have a problem that you cannot solve. Absolutely. You have to solve it. Now, the, the pandemic was a, a nightmare. I remember that everything closed. We all had to stay indoors. Mm -hmm. It's no different from me, for me, than it was for anybody else. Absolutely. Um, but uh, when we came back to work, well, what, what, what we did was, or what I did was we uh, used the, um, the opportunity. Uh, again, we had that um, lockdown. Mm -hmm. So lockdown came up. The pubs were, couldn't open. We weren't allowed to open the pubs. Okay. But I had staff. So I thought, right, what are we going to do? We're going to give mm -hmm. the pub a lick of paint. Mm. The pub, you know what I mean? So we gave, the, we gave the pub a lick of paint. Yeah. Um, the, the, we, we weren't allowed to open, but people could go to work. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought, right, these are the things that we do. Mm. What can we do? Not, not, not what can't we do? What, what we can we do? do? So How do we keep pedaling? You can do. Don't yes. look at what you can do. Mm -hmm. Look at what you can do. Mm -hmm. And so we're always looking at opportunities and avenues. And and it's a difficult question. I'm, I, mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah, like I said, just just looking at what we can do. Look yeah. at the, you know, the glasses are full or it's half empty. And, Absolutely. And, and I try. Yeah. I try <laughs> and and think the glasses are full. Mm -hmm. It's. It's easy to say, mm -hmm. it's easy to say, and it's not always easy to do. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, I've, I've been in that situation before yeah. where, I've, where I felt, you know, it's hard to go on. But at the yeah. end of the day, it, you get out of the morning, you get your Always a way. You have a, yeah. you know, you have your shower and you get on with it. Absolutely. And I was going to say, this is my absolutely final question, I promise. Um, what advice would you have for a young man who was perhaps you, you know, when you were in school, perhaps if they found out they're dyslexic or they've been discounted by their teachers or they've been discounted by their parents and really they're just feeling like, you know, they're no good to society. What advice would you give? Let's say, for example, for yourself to it, to, to a know, younger yeah, version I, I, of yourself. I get that. Yeah. I, I absolutely get that. Mm -hmm. The problem is that unless you can't know what you don't know. Yep. And, I would say there's always an answer. Okay. And you, the challenge that you have, mm -hmm. somebody else has had. Absolutely. And you, no, nobody's unique. But everybody's unique, but nobody's new, unique. We've all, yeah. there's, uh, the, Nothing whatever new challenge under the you've sun, been through, someone there's, else always has been, been there's always somebody else been through it. Yeah. And when you're feeling despondent and you're feeling low mm -hmm. no matter what other people say to you you're feeling despondent and low mm -hmm. the way i used to look at it my best friend leon uh we grew up together we just went through life together just close as close can be yeah his dad had an accident um and he was paralyzed Ooh. from the neck down uh from me Ooh. leon being about Sorry 17 years old shocking yeah and i remember that one of the other things i used to keep telling myself no matter how bad it gets for me I look at Tony mm -hmm. and I'm just thinking the struggle that he's going through. Bro, yeah. This is my challenges are nothing. Exactly. And that, that, that gave me perspective. Yeah. So yeah, the, 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 the what would I say to a young person? Mm -hmm. Just keep going. It's never as bad as you think it, it is. is. Oh, it, it is brilliant. it, the, the it. Yes. And worrying about things and, and, and yeah. stressing it, it, you can master it. You mm -hmm. can, you can get by and, 
it is the problem. Absolutely. Yeah. Worrying about it. It's yep. never as bad as you think it's going to be. Absolutely. And you can always, you can always get by. You can yes. always get past it. And yeah. it's never as dark as you think it's going to be. Absolutely. I agree. I say, fail through it, work through it, go through it. Yeah, yeah. Because what's in store for you in ahead of your journey, you don't know. And I genuinely believe, because I'm, I'm a believer, right? Like I, I believe in God. And he puts us through certain situations to prepare us for the person that we're going to become. Look at Gordon's amazing story. Like you've given us so many gems. And as I said, if anyone was looking at you when you were younger and in school, they wouldn't have dreamed you would be here, Matthew, you know, you where you are. I would never make anything of myself. Most remember, of them tell us that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Drayton, I remember oh, her. She said, you will never be anything. You wow. Will never Wow. Remember, wow. Clear as day. Maybe that's one of the drivers that's pushed me forward. There you go. Maybe I want to prove Mrs. Drayton wrong. Absolutely. I'll say this, Gordon. Is there anything upcoming? Uh, perhaps do you have any socials, uh, yeah, website? Got, just mm -hmm. yeah, just have a look on the uh, the Legacy um, yeah. Facebook page. Mm -hmm. We've got an amazing manager, Chloe Mitchell. She's Brilliant. fantastic. She's all over social media. Mm -hmm. We've got. Um, We've got canal festivals. We've got yeah. um, Queen's Jubilee. Got okay. loads and loads of stuff coming up at the uh, the, the Savile Town Wharf. Call Brilliant. down, just have a coffee, sit down, have a look yeah. at the water, have a look at the boats. Yeah, um, I'll put the links uh, in the YouTube yeah, yeah. and in the Spotify. Do you have like a, an Instagram? Uh, do you um, know something? These are words I have got. I'm 57 years old. It's, <laughs> no worries, good. Speaking Spanish. What, what Chloe's, I'll do. Chloe's all over this. I'll, yes. I'll put Chloe in front of you. I'm all over it as well. What I'll do is I'll get the links to yeah, your I'll, socials I'll and I will yeah. plug them in. Absolutely good. And listen, this has been such a brilliant and exhilarating conversation. And do you know the better bit of it is you are the perfect candidate for inspiration taking what that's how i like it i like the conversation just to happen you know even though i plan for it and i will say guys uh we are gone but what i'll say follow like subscribe on youtube follow us on um spotify leave us a recommendation uh on apple Podcasts as well another episode delivered to yourself hope you enjoyed gordon's uh journey and yes guys i'll catch you in the next one cheers see you later thank you